All right, we're starting with a new Blender project. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is delete the camera and delete the light. We only want the cube in our scene. Then we need to go to Edit, Preferences. When I wanna make sure we have the Add-ons tab selected, in the search bar, type in Cell Fracture. It's this one right here. You're gonna to wanna to install it if you don't already have it installed. Go ahead and X out of that. Select your object. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you are in object mode. You can press tab to switch between edit mode and object mode. You can also go up here. Make sure you're in object mode, otherwise it will not work correctly. Now let's fracture our mesh. Press F3. We're gonna search for that cell fracture. Add on, and here it opens up this window. The most important setting here is the source limit. The source limit defines how many pieces your mesh will be divided into or more accurately, the maximum number of pieces. In a simple mesh like this, we can go ahead and run it. You can see down here, objects eight out of nine selected. It was only divided into eight objects. If we have a simple mesh and we want it to be divided into more pieces, we're gonna have to click the tab, go into edit mode, right click it and subdivide. Subdivide it a few times. Back to object mode. F3, open up that cell fracture window and run it again. And here we can see we got 100 pieces just like we wanted. If you have multiple destructible objects in your scene, is it possible that all of them could be destroyed at the same time? And in that case, you'll have hundreds of individual pieces being simulated through the physics engine and that could tank your frame rate. Keep that in mind as you choose how many pieces you set the source limit here. Maybe you want to set the source limit to 10 or 20 so you can limit the amount of possible objects in your scene. All right, so once you are ready to export, we're going to select the original mesh here, the whole cube, and we're going to go to File, Export, and we're going to export as GLTF 2.0. This is the recommended file format by the Godot developers. It's open source. And you can save it wherever you want. I'm going to save mine on my desktop. And I'm going to call this one cube. You're going to want to make sure to open this include tab and have make sure selected objects is checked because we only want this, this mesh uh, exported. Go ahead and export that. Now we need to select all the cells, all the pieces of our mesh. So click the top one, scroll all the way down, hold shift and click the bottom one. And that'll select everything in between as well. And again, we're going to export that as well. Same file format. And I'm going to call this one cube underscore broken. Again, make sure selected objects is checked. And export that. All right, so I've created a pretty bare bones project here. We have the main scene, which is a spatial node. We have the floor, which is just a CSG box. And we have a camera into the scene. Uh, make sure it's the current one pointed to the middle of this floor. And I've also copied over the two meshes over into the project. All right, so to get destruction working, we need to go to the asset library up here and we're gonna type in destruction. This is the one we want, destruction by Jumit. Go ahead and click it. We're gonna download it. Once it's done downloading, we're gonna install it. Okay. And it's created a new folder here, uh, the add-ons folder, and here's all the files for the plugin right here. So in order to make the destructible objects in our game, we're gonna open up the assets folder and we're gonna open up the cube.glv uh, file and we're gonna create, and we're gonna create a new inherited scene. and control us to save, and you can save this wherever you want. We want this to be a scene file as opposed to the GLB file, so we're gonna do that with the broken one as well. Create a new, uh, control us to save. All right, we now have everything we need. We just need to hook everything up. So open up that cube scene, not the GLB file, the scene. Uh, select that root cube node, and we're going to add a new child of type node, the plain white node. Go ahead and create that. 
and I'm going to rename that to destruction. And we're going to attach a script to it. We're not going to create a new script. We're actually going to load an existing one. That's going to be in the add-ons folder. Destruction. This destruction.gd. I'm going to go ahead and attach that. So this is the file that came with our, the plugin. And you can see here, uh, when we call this destroy function, that's when everything happens. That's when the shards get created. They get added to the scene tree. We also have these three exported variables. So we can go ahead and take a look at those. So we have the shard template. The shard template defines how the shards behave, how the pieces behave after they've been spawned into the world. There's a few shard templates that come with the plugin. You can play around with those. The shard scene is the mesh scene that is the pieces. So that's the one we created, the cube broken. We can actually load that now. Cube broken, open. And the shard container, it defines what node the pieces will be added to. So in this case, it's two nodes up, dot dot represents up a directory. So starting here, we go up one is the cube, go up one more, it's the parent of the cube, which in our case is gonna be the main scene. All right, we have all that set. Let's control us to save. Let's go back to this main scene, select the main node. We're gonna instance a cube scene. Let's go ahead and make sure it's above the floor. Control us to save. And we're just gonna add a simple script to main. And we're just gonna add a simple script to main that allows us to call that destroy function in the cube when we press the UI accept action, which is bound to the enter key. So now we're ready to run the project. And when we click the enter key, the mesh gets destroyed. If you felt like you learned something useful, why not leave a like, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.